Hello and welcome to my talk. Human in the loop Oracle learning for semantic bugs in string processing programs. This is a paper published at ESTAR 2022 and I'm Charaka Geetal, a PhD candidate at Monash University, Australia. This work is in collaboration with Tuan Palm, Alida Aliti and Marcel Boomer. Oracle learning for semantic bugs. A semantic bug or a functional bug. When this kind of bug exists in a program, the program produces incorrect outputs for certain inputs. As an example, consider this count vowels function. Its intended functionality is to count the vowels of a given string. You can see that the vowel count for coverage given by this program is wrong. In other cases, it behaves normally. Usually, when a semantic bug is exposed, the program does not crash. However, it produces wrong outputs like this. In order to detect these bugs, therefore, you need to know the expected or correct program behavior. As an example, in order to say the vowel count for coverage is wrong, you have to know that you have to know the accurate vowel count of this string. Due to this reason, human is the only possible oracle for semantic bugs, but we know that there are some limitations and it's not practical because of that, debugging of semantic bugs has become a challenging task. The obvious solution is develop automated test protocols. To do that, we need to follow a human in the loop approach. In this work, we propose a solution to learn automated test protocols for semantic bugs in string processing programs. Here the objective is to learn the condition under which the bug is exposed or the failure condition of the bug. Usually, the complexity of a failure condition is independent from the program size. So what is the best representation for the failure condition of a bug in this category of programs? It's a grammar describing the structure of failing inputs. Because when such a condition, especially a failure condition, is defined in terms of program inputs as black box. And such a definition can be used independent of the internal information of the program. To achieve our objective, we have to address few challenges associated with string inputs. Basically, single failing string input is insufficient to say why the program fails. Because a string can be interpreted in multiple ways. As an example, consider this uh, failing input coverage. All these explanations are valid. But we don't know what is the explanation uh, from these which better says the reason for the failure. And the other thing is that failing input can contain character sequences that are optional to trigger the failure. As an example, under this uh, particular failure condition, all these things are failing, but A is the only thing necessary for that. But to identify it, we need to have more than one failing input. Now let's look at our solution. Our solution is called grammar to fix. It uses a single failing string input of the bug. It interacts with the buggy program as well as with the human. At the end of the process, it produces an automated oracle, which is a grammar describing the pattern of all the failing inputs of the bug. And it is given as a collection of DFAs connected with distortions. At the same time, it produces a repair test suite, which can be used with automated program repair. Now I would like to describe how this grammar works as a test oracle. So assume that the new string input has been given and grammar is there. So if the grammar accepts that uh, string input, it is predicted as failing, otherwise it's passing. Now I would like to present you the methodology of grammar to fix. Basically, we follow a zooming in and zooming out approach. That means, first we find out the root cause for the failure. Based on that, we develop a basic level grammar and we generalize it and also we extend them. Actually, we found that it is difficult to directly apply the classical grammar inference techniques for this task because the alphabet should be predetermined 
and when the alphabet gets larger significantly larger number of examples are required to infer a grammar without overfitting there are four main steps in grammar to fix as delta debugging minimization grammar inference grammar generalization and grammar extension delta debugging minimization is the process that we zoom in to the root cause of the failure that means we find the minimal failure causing input so in grammar inference step we derive a basic structure for failure causing inputs as a grammar in grammar generalization we begins to zoom out so there we find more general character classes for certain parts of the grammar and in grammar extension step exploring the neighborhood of the failure causing input we extend the grammar the first step of grammar to fix is delta debugging minimization this is an algorithm used to find the root cause of a failure in software testing we apply delta debugging minimization to the given failing string as delta debugging minimization follows a divide and conquer approach we can find a set of passing inputs and set of failing inputs so in the set of failing inputs we can find the minimal failing input or the root cause for the failure in the next step which is grammar inference we apply rpni or regular positive and negative inference algorithm with a modification we use the test inputs obtained in delta debugging minimization the positive examples are the failing inputs as we need a grammar for the failing inputs and the negative examples are the passing inputs our modification is to make the characters of the minimal failing input mandatory in the grammar we introduce an additional merging constraint i would like to explain that assume that between this q1 and q2 there is an interstate transition taking the character c if this character c is a character of the minimal failing input these two states are not merged therefore we can have a grammar where the characters of the minimal failing input are mandatory and also by exploring the character class of the minimal failing input we can generalize this grammar further given the failing and passing inputs with our modified rpni algorithm we can have a deterministic finite automata that accepts all the failing inputs and rejects all the passing inputs next step is grammar generalization there are three generalization steps basic generalization handling special cases character class finding of the minimal failing input basic generalization we have already identified few optional characters in the grammar and the mandatory characters are in the interstate transitions in this step we estimate more optional characters using the concept of complementary self transitions i would like to explain this concept so you can see c2 is in an outgoing transition of q1 and a1 a2 and a3 are in a self transition we convert that self transition as it can happen under any character other than c2 that means any character that is not used by any of the outgoing transition of the state so this is our complementary self transition under that uh, we can have more optional characters than previous our next generalization step is handling special cases under that we consider these two cases in other words if we have a dfa like this we check whether this kind of complementary self transitions are possible in the grammar describing the failing inputs to do that we generate new test inputs and those are forwarded to the human next generalization step is character class finding of the minimal failing input we have already identified one minimal failing input we call it f min so in this particular step our objective is to find more minimal inputs based on f min we assume that the unique characters of f min represent some kind of an abstract pattern of a group of minimal failing inputs we validate this assumption using some random substitutions so 
we generate new inputs that for that and if you find substitutions that leads to such uh, minimal failing inputs this particular DFA is converted to a collection of DFAs connected with distortions. Final step of grammar to fix is, fix is grammar extension. Here we explore the neighborhood of the given failing input and we improve the grammar through that. Basically, we refine the grammar from the failing inputs that the current grammar cannot identify properly. We use mutational fuzzing for this neighborhood exploration. So once a test case is generated, we present it to the grammar. So if the grammar rejects it, that means the grammar oracle predicts it as a passing test case, we present it to the human. If human says it's a failing, it signals that the current grammar hasn't been trained properly to identify all the failing inputs. Then we apply the DD min to uh, character class finding step in grammar to fix and the new grammar is generated and it is combined to the grammar with a disjunction. Same time the failing input is sent to the seed corpus. To create the repair test suite for the bug, we use all the human label test inputs in the grammar inference process. To evaluate grammar to fix, we conducted few experiments. For these experiments, we use programs from these benchmarks, QuickBugs, Interplus, and CodeFlows. QuickBugs uh, programs are written in Python, and the other two benchmarks, the programs are in C language. When selecting these subjects, we considered programs processing strings and containing functional bugs. And also, for each subject, there's a human label test suite. And the other thing is, for each subject, there's a golden version. That means a version uh, that the bug is fixed. We use this version to simulate the human in the experiments. For the program repair experiment, we use the subjects only from code clause because there's a separate repair validation test suite. And GenProg was used as the automated program repair tool. Now I would like to present the results of our experiments. We conducted these experiments based on four research questions. Under research question one, we assess the grammar quality or how accurately this grammar predicts the test cases. So these are the block box plots of our experiments. I would like to summarize the results. For the majority of subjects, the overall accuracy is above 92% and recall for failing inputs, even though we begin with single failing input is about 97 percent. It implies that grammar to fix infers high quality grammar explaining the pattern of failing inputs. And the next research question, we actually assess the contributions from these heuristics we used in uh, grammar to fix, uh, especially in generalization steps. So we identified that uh, through these generalization steps, uh, the recall for failing input is improved from 20% to 97%. So we conclude that these heuristics positively affect the grammar quality. Under research question three, our focus was on the human labeling effort. So this is a graph in log scale. So basically we identified that for most subjects, the human would need to answer at most 42 years no questions. So this is something reasonable. Even though the number of queries are higher in some cases, it can be distributed among multiple users. Our final research question is on automated program repair. There we compared the manual test suites given by the benchmark with grammar to fix auto-generated test suites. So our results suggest that less than 50% of subjects can be repaired with both test suites. However, the patches produced by the auto-generated test suites can pass all the test cases in the held out test suites in most cases. Therefore, we conclude that auto-generated test suites leads to high quality repairs with GenProc. To wrap up my talk, I would like to summarize my presentation. Beginning from the problem, I explain our solution and the methodology used in grammar to fix. Finally, I discuss the experimental results and that's all about grammar to fix and thank you very much.